Hi, I'm Tom DeLore, and like many hematologists around the United States, my phone has just been ringing off the hook about this concern about vaccines and thrombosis. Well, what's the story? Well, recently uh, in Europe and now in the United States, there's been this phenomenon called vaccine-induced thrombotic thrombocytopenia reported. This appears to be a very rare complication of the adenovirus COVID vaccines. Briefly, what do we know and what do we do about it? Well, as was reported yesterday in a CDC press conference, there's been at least seven cases in the United States, but actually there's probably more uh, that is going on and will soon to be reported. Interestingly, in the clinical trial of the J&J vaccine, there was one man who got a cerebral vein thrombosis, and mainly the press conference concerned six women aged 18 to 48 with this. Now, five of the six initial symptoms when they presented were headache, uh, often severe. However, only uh, one patient did present only with back pain, but then develop headache. Some of these patients also had neurologic changes. Uh, one had abdomen pain. Now, it's important that uh, although there's been a lot of speculation on Twitter and in other uh, media, that actually only one of these six patients were on estrogen. So five of the six women were not on birth control, weren't pregnant, weren't postpartum. So these were not estrogen related. There was thrombocytopenia in all the patients, severe down to 12,000, up to 127,000 in one of the patients. Now, what about the clots? All these patients had cerebral vein thrombosis. Two of these patients also had portal vein thrombosis. One patient actually had portal vein, cerebral vein, and pulmonary embolism. What a, what a thrombotic storm going on in that patient. Another patient had a DVT. All the patients that were tested had antiplatelet factor four antibodies. So what is VITT? This appears to be analogous in a very severe form of our dreaded uh, complication of heparin, heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. These patients so far in Europe and the United States have been reported to have platelet-activating antiplatelet factor IV antibodies. And there is a literature on this that you can get hit without heparin, so-called spontaneous hit, and that's currently the best thinking on what VITT represents. And what we clinically see is thrombocytopenia and very widespread devastating thrombosis. Now, it's important to remember so far, this has only been seen with the adenovirus vaccines. Why? Was well, the spike protein they produce? No, there's no cross-reactivity with that. People speculated, well, maybe it's DNA. DNA is a big negatively charged molecule. Maybe that's what does this. But this has all been pure speculation. Now, let's get some perspective on this. Cerebral vein thrombosis is a complication of COVID, reported in about 39 of a million patients with COVID. Vaccine-induced cerebral vein thrombosis, four in a million, uh, if you do the numbers, uh, maybe higher if you restrict yourself to young women. So obviously COVID is a greater thrombotic disease. And we all know that patients who end up in the hospital with COVID have up to uh, 14 to 20% risk of thrombosis. However, this is a risk of cerebral vein thrombosis over the baseline of anywhere from four to 15 relative risk for young women. So what do we do? Well, the risk period appears to be four to 28 days after either the J&J &J or AstraZeneca adenovirus vaccine. We look out for symptoms of cerebral vein thrombosis, headache, often worse with Valsalva, back pain, and obviously neuro new neurologic symptoms. Now remember in Europe and some of the patients in the United States had thrombosis in other fields. So let's not forget severe abdomen pain out of proportion to the exam, leg swelling, shortness of breath. Uh, a strong clue to presence of it is to get a CBC. And that CBC will show thrombocytopenia. At the platelet counts under 150,000, get imaging. If you're borderline getting imaging before the platelets are low, get imaging. If there's thrombosis and the platelets are under 150,000, that is VITT, and how do we treat it? Well, since it's like heparin-induced thrombocytopenia, no heparin in any way, shape, or form. Use some sort of form of alternative anticoagulation. Uh, in our house, we use our Gatroban uh, for heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. Other people are very familiar with 5 alarutin These patients are sick, and I wouldn't use the new direct oral anticoagulants. Not uh, really any substantial data for their use in sick patients with HIT. And here, these patients are sick, go with, quote, the tried and true, or gatroban, or bivalorutin. 
give IVIG. We have data, this works in severe hit. There's been positive experience in Europe with this, a gram per kilogram to start. And obviously we should report these cases. Now there's obviously so many questions. Why the predilection for women? Well, we don't know, although it's interesting that actually heparin-induced thrombocytopenia is twice as common as women. So some sort of immunologic mystery there. And why young people? Well, we know cerebral vein thrombosis is more common in young people. We don't know, but this may be a clue that future use of these vaccines maybe should restrict, be restricted to older patients. So the bottom line, history of vaccine, any type of symptom of uh, DVT, PE, cerebral vein thrombosis, visceral vein thrombosis, and thrombocytopenia, even mild, got to think of vaccine-induced uh, <clears throat> thrombotic thrombocytopenia. And this is obviously a developing story, but that's what we know at this moment.